Oh, goody, someone stopped in. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday, October 25th. I've got a live streaming event tomorrow. I invite you to it. It is at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor were there for an hour. We're talking to investors about stocks they're interested in. So if you've got one, bring it on in, drop it in the comments. We'll take a look at it. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now, something I don't say often enough here, and I really should, these videos, they're brought to you courtesy of Penny Boys. That's the Discord group I'm with. We created this for people who like to trade penny stocks. But Penny Boys does everything. Blue chip stocks, NFTs, tokens, crypto, penny stocks. They do it all. Even sports betting. We have people like me and you, and then they got professionals. So if you would like to join us, it is free to come on in, chat around. We have some paid for education, if that's what you want, but that's totally up to you. Down at the bottom, you will find an invite from the wizard. Just click that and come on in and look for me, the stocks wizard. So I have got some leftover DD I'm going to share with you right now, just like I did yesterday. I have five hot charts that I've not done any due diligence on, but look like they're ready to break out. Let me show you what I found today. So we're looking at five charts that I found just a little while ago that all look like they have heat. They all look ready to break out. Now, I don't know anything else about them except that. I did the same thing for you yesterday. I shared five stocks with you. How did they do? Considering we didn't know anything about them either. We were leaning completely on the technicals. Well, here are the five stocks we looked at yesterday. Let me zoom in on that so you can see that better. All right. Of the five stocks we looked at, four took gains today from 20% down to 2%. Only one went into the red. And that is knowing absolutely nothing. We didn't have any catalysts as far as we know. All we had were technicals. And four out of five took gains. That's why I like hot charts. So let's take a look at the five I found for us today. First one we're going to take a look at is right here. This is ticker NCTY. Now we are looking primarily at what's going on right now. You can see she's had a big fall from a high here of about $14.70 all the way down to $3.33. And I don't know anything about it. I don't know why she fell. But right now she is turning up strong. She has broken through all of her SMAs and she is working towards that 200. And right here is where she fell from at $7.12. And right now she's at $5.36. But she could go a lot higher. Another one I like is MKGP. This is an atypical breakout chart. We've got the price deep underneath the 200, getting real close and then pushing over it and breaking out. Everything is set up for a continuation right now. Osculators are all in the right place. Volume is coming in strong. TGL. We just talked about this one the other day, but I got to point it out because it is hot. You can see it. It was an atypical breakout chart. She had a big rip right here. She went from 30 cents all the way up to 73 cents, came back down, tagged that 50, and is shooting off right now, and everything looks gorgeous. Everything is in the right position, going the right direction. Then we got LGIQ. She had a big high here of 76 cents, came all the way down through the 200, and has fallen down to a low of 13 and a half cents. And right now, she has taken some big bars, and she is right up underneath that 200. She's fallen back, but she's landed on top of the 50, with all the SMAs coming right up underneath her. Volume is strong. Osculators are all in the right position, pushing up. I'm liking this. Last one we got for you here is SKYX, another a typical breakout chart falling hard underneath the 200 underneath the 50 and here she hits a low bubble of one dollar and 20 cents off of that low she's bounced over the 50 and she is pushing towards the 200 you can see she's about ready to break this resistance of a dollar 69 we got another resistance up here at around a dollar 95 a dollar 98 over the 200 so if she can get on top of this resistance chances are she's going to take off and all of our osculators are pushing up right now. So we had five yesterday and four took gains and we didn't know anything about them. Though I did tell you to do some due diligence. Here we've got another five. I don't know anything about them. It wouldn't hurt to do some due diligence.
All right, let's take a look at the stocks I've done the due diligence on. This first ticker we're going to be taking a look at, NNDM Nano Dimensions. I've gotten a lot of requests to look at over the last few weeks, and I apologize that I haven't gotten to it. I do get a lot of requests, and I honestly can't look at them all, but this is one we need to consider. So my personal apologies go out to Samuel Martin, William Broadwick, and Haley Carr. I'm doing it now. And now is not a bad time to be considering Nano Dimensions. She just had some big news come out here, had a huge investment in the company, and the chart, well, <laughs> the chart isn't exactly what I look for. But I can say it is a buying opportunity right now. So NNDM, she finished today at $2.72, and she did drop a little over 5% today. This is a penny stock on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So you're going to be able to trade this for free, trade it pre-market, trade it after market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is Nano Dimensions about? Well, they tell us here that Nano Dimensions is a 3D printing technology group based in Israel. The company is engaged in researching, developing, and manufacturing 3D printers and functional nanomaterial inks for printing electronics in particular, circuit boards. The company's primary ink products are conductive silver nanoparticle inks and insulating nanopolymer inks. Both of these materials have applications way beyond printing circuit boards. The company's jet printer system is actually a desktop inkjet disposition tool for printing 3D multi-layer circuit boards at home <laughs> or at the office. The company's 3D printers are in advanced development stages right now. They just keep making them better and better. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, we had a little bit of increase, not much, but at least it's going the right direction. She is normally doing about 1.7 million shares a day, and today she did just a little over 1.7 million shares. Share structure for Nano. They don't give us a lot of information. We see the outstanding share count is a little over a quarter billion, 258 million. Don't know what the float is here. It could be as high as a quarter billion, or it could be considerably less. That's what we're open for. Market cap for the company, 742 million. Financials for Nano. Back in 2019, she was doing 7 million. COVID came along and took half of that away from her, but she tripled that in 2021, jumping to 10.4 million, and then quadrupled that in 2022 to 43 million. And her profits have been growing strong. Quarterly, we got nothing to look at here. However, we do have a news press that gave us that information. The last quarter, they did $12.2 million worth of business, which is a 22% increase over last year. And from the beginning of the year, the full nine months, they have done $41.9 million. Now, do you recall what their total revenues were for 2022? $43 million. And we've got three more months to go. It looks like they can probably touch $50 million before the year's end. They also add this. 2022 and 2023 revenue success will enable the management to assign 2024 as the year of profitability focus. Could be a good time to get in. The company also shares an update regarding lost inventory due, due to an attack in Israel, but no material impact to business expected. Thank goodness for that. Now let's jump into the disclosures. We have got a huge piece of news over here. This came out today. The SC13D, which are filed whenever you have new investors come in and they buy so many shares, they basically become a partner in the company. Well, we got a bunch of investors <laughs> that came into the company today. Anson's Funds Management Company, they just purchased themselves about 18 million shares. They now own 7.6% of the company. Uh, Bruce R. Winson, he too just got about 18 million shares. He's got 7.6% of the company. Well, there's a whole bunch of these. Well, when you come all the way down here, they add it all up for you. The ADSs representing the ordinary shares reported in this filing and being owned by the reporting person were purchased using working capital of the funds. An aggregate amount of approximately $47 million worth of shares were bought. $47 million was invested into this company today. 
good time to be looking at this company. Then we've got a bunch of 6Ks over here. All of these 6Ks correlate to news. So let's jump on over to that news. Now, all the news up here is old. This is all from 2016 back. <laughs> the bottom half has been blank. I have had no news here that was current. I have had to jump over here to my backup site. This is the insidertracking.com. This is where I go whenever I don't get news over there. Of course, it comes up now. Since I am set up over here, we're just going to pick it up from over here. Now, we've got four pieces of news I'm going to look at that all came out here in October. Nano Dimensions business functions as usual. We just got done reading. There are concerns since they're in Israel, things could happen to them. So far, so good. Then we read about their preliminary Q3 results. Those were good. October 18th, Nano Dimensions announces additional governance enhancements. Now, I'm not sure why they're doing all this, but they had some of their directors step down and they had a four-star general step in. Now they've got the six independent directors that they need. You need independent directors if you're going to uplist. They haven't said that, but they've been taking care of that. And then more big news that came out on the 19th. Nano Dimensions receives Israeli court approval for its $200 million repurchase plan. The repurchase plan enables Nano to buy back its shares at compelling valuation levels and drive shareholder value. I'm not quite sure what that means. They tell us here that the company can buy up to $200 million worth of its American depository shares during the next 12 months. But keep in mind, it's completely at their discretion, a little, a lot, or none at all. Completely up to them. So that's what we got going, a huge investment, shares being bought back, the business is booming, they're making all kinds of money, the chart just isn't as hot as I would like it, but it does appear to be a buying opportunity right now. Let me show you what I saw. So we're going to chart this stock and all the other stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that doesn't cost you anything either. So this is NNDM, a six-month, four-hour chart. Now, I found it interesting that six months ago, the price was exactly what the price is right now, though there has been a lot of big bounces through this time period. The biggest bounce was between June and July. We had a low here of $2.16 in June and $3.35 in July. One long surge. And I was curious to know why. So I went and looked it up. It turns out on the 27th of June, a news press came out. There was an offer from a company, I believe called Stratus. They wanted to buy this company out and go private. And they were going to pay cash for every share. And if I read it correctly, it was $18 to $20 a share. Yeah, that's why it was screaming. Now, I don't think the company took them up on that offer, believe it or not, as juicy as it was. I haven't read that, but the stock started to fall. I think it would have kept climbing if they said yes. Now, currently, she had a bounce just about four days ago, going from 244 up to a high of 291, started to fall down, climbed again, and then today, she took a lot of fall. She went from 286 down to 271. The good news is that she's landed on a very strong double support. She is on her 50-day SMA and the 20-day SMA, and she's still above the nine. Our osculators are a bit weak. Our PPO, which you read the same as the MACD, it's still above the pink line, but it is coming down. Our MACD has had a negative crossover. It's coming down, and our RSI is falling as well. Very slowly, it is currently at 47, and our volume is nothing to get excited about right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she is hanging around the 200 here until she lost it. Deep dive down to that 244, very quickly bounced right back up to the 200, started climbing, and then had another fall, and is sitting there on top of her 200. This looks regular. This all looks normal. She had a big fall, big bounce immediately to get back up there. She has started climbing, and she's retesting the 200 after breaking through. All normal. I am expecting this to bounce right now. We've got our 50-day, our 9-day, and our 20-day all over the 200. Everything is in right position. Our oscillators stink, though. 
We had a full day of falling. You can't expect them to look good. We've got a negative crossover in our PPO. Our MACD has come under the signal line. And our RSI is clear down at 39 right now. Five day, five minute. That's looking a little better. There was that low of 244 and that big strong rip early in the morning. Started pre-market, continued after the bell. We like to see that. You can see she fell right down onto this support that went from six months ago, right? She fell right back on top of this, is bouncing on it, and that's not why I drew it there. I was just showing you how the price was even. And she's come right back down to it again. And she is sitting there perfectly waiting for something to happen. Do you think a $47 million investment is something to happen? They didn't put a news press out on it. You would have to read the filing and not everybody reads filings. So if they put a news press out on it, do you think maybe it could run? I think it has reason to run even if they don't. So please folks, put NNDM on your watch list and the rest of you who asked me to cover it, I hope you appreciate it. Our next hot penny stock has got some innovative technology that every drone company in the world is probably going to need. This is ParaZero Technologies, ticker P-R-Z-O. Now she had news come out in September, had a nice bounce, came right back down, and then she had news in October. That just soared to the moon. She went up and up and up, and then the 200-day SMA came onto the screen. And what do you think happened? Yeah, the price went right to it. Came right down to the 200 and she's bouncing off of it right now. And this is one of those sort of companies I think is going to grow and grow and grow as the drone market continues growing. Everybody's going to need what they've got. Parachutes. You can't have drones falling out of the sky on people. And these parachutes are allowing drone companies to now get contracts in cities with permission from the FFA and whoever else has the final say on being able to do these sort of things. So we've got lots of catalysts here and lots of potential. So ParaZero finished the day at $1.77 with almost 10% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ. So they tell us here that ParaZero's vision is to use the safe air drone safety technology to unlock the full potential of the commercial UAS industry through enhancing operational safety, mitigating risk, and enabling organizations to benefit from regulatory approvals for advanced UAS use cases, including drone delivery, operations over people, and beyond visual line of sight. So what was the relative volume around Para Zero today? Ah. Oh. She lost half her volume virtually, dropping from 13.2 million down to 7 million. And still she managed to take 10% gains today. Share structure for Para Zero? Hot darn, we got ourselves a low float. Right from the get go, outstanding share count is only 3.3 million. And the float is lower than the outstanding share count. Maybe a little, maybe a lot. No matter how you slice it, folks, we got ourselves a very low float on this stock. Market cap currently is $5.3 million. Taking a look at the financials for Para Zero. Well, 2020 and 2021, she was doing about $700,000. Had a drop in 2022 to $560,000. Taking a look at the quarterlies, we don't get any information, but I did jump into their financials. And it turns out that for the first half of the year, they have done $345,000, which means they're pretty much on course for doing another $700,000. But business is now picking up. Taking a look at those disclosures, we have got a bunch of 6Ks here. All of them have to do with the news, every single one of them. So let's just dive on into the news. Now we've got lots of news over here. Some of it's for the company, some of it isn't. I have found the important ones. I have got three pieces of news here. One in September, two in October. Let's take a look at these. One came out September 8th. Aerobotics Optimus 1X Drone receives historic US FAA type certification using ParaZero Safe Air Safety System. The Aerobotics Optimus 1X uncrewed aircraft system is the first non-air carrier drone designed for autonomous security and data capture that has been granted type certification by the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. 
pair of zero technologies today announced that the u.s federal aviation administration has granted the aerobotics optimus 1x system an airworthiness type certification a historic milestone aerobotics is a subsidiary of ondas holdings which is on the nasdaq ticker ondas a leading provider of private industrial wireless networks commercial drones and automated data solutions the certification verifies the compliance of the aircraft's design with the required ffa worthiness standards ensuring safe operations within the national airspace system the next one this came out october 6th this is the one that got it running hard Australian regulator approves first commercial drone flights in populated areas and near people using ParaZero safety systems. ParaZero and Avril make history overcoming the previous regulatory barriers, now enabling the first operational approval in Australia for an organization to conduct advanced drone operations in populated areas and near people. ParaZero Technologies and Avro, an Australian commercial drone operator and training organization, announced today a first ever Australian authorization for drones to operate over populated areas near people when using ParaZero safety systems approved by the Civil Aviation Safety Agency, the CASA. With the use of ParaZero's advanced parachute safety technology, ParaZero regional partner Avro has landed a precedent-setting historic approval for complex operations. And the last piece of news came out October 12th. ParaZero Technologies and Maris Tech expand their collaboration into the defense market for drones. The joint solution will integrate safety technology and predictive maintenance into a unified platform, leveraging Maris Tech's artificial intelligence and video analytics capability. ParaZero Technologies and Maris Tech, a business-to-business -business provider of edge artificial intelligence, accelerated video solutions for edge platforms, including drones, today announced an expansion of their collaboration. ParaZero and Maris Tech entered into a letter of intent pursuant to which the companies will collaborate to develop a unified product, integrating safety technology and predictive maintenance. In addition, the companies will explore the possibility of enhancing the capability of ParaZero's failure prediction and emergency safety system utilizing the AI acceleration capabilities of Maris Tech's original equipment manufacturer products. So it's safety on top of safety. All these drone companies need the parachutes so that they don't fall out of the sky and land on someone and hurt them. Then you've also got to have backup for the parachute. You've got to have something tell you if the parachute's going to work or not. So they've got the AI technology now being incorporated into it. And I think this is going to explode. There's a lot of drone companies out there that can't get contracts to do anything around people, around populated areas, because someone could get hurt if they fall out of the sky. Ta-da! A parachute will fix that. So let's go take a look at the chart. This one is a hot chart. We're going to take a look at ParaZero now, ticker P-R-Z-O. This is a six-month, four-hour view, but it only starts in July on the 27th when she came on the market. It was that day she hit her all-time high of $4.15, and it was here at the beginning of October she hit her all-time low of $0.56. Cents. Now, while she was falling, the news was causing pops. We had some good pops here. This one right here is when the FAA gave approval, the U.S. news, and she only jumped about 80% on U.S. news, 80%. Then here, this is the Australian news, right? And it ran from $0.60 cents all the way up to virtually $3.60, $3.50. You are talking about almost 600% gains on the Australian approval. Then she came back down when the 200-day SMA came into the picture. Did not actually touch it here. She then started to climb again and then just had a full fall away. Went through every single SMA and finally tagged the 200. And I think that's all she needed to do. And now she is starting to bounce back up. Volume stinks. We got no volume to even talk about. Osculator say she is trying to recover though. You can see our PPO is starting to curve up, getting ready to cross that pink line. 
We've already had a crossover on our MACD. It is pushing up towards the signal line, and we've got green bars accumulating. And our RSI, she's come from the basement of 32 up to a chilly 47, but she was climbing. Right now, she has just gone level. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our rip with the Australian news. She came down through the 50. Looks like she was hanging around the 50 the hard way and then lost it all. Broke the 200-day SMA on our one-hour chart. Came down here and she is now starting to turn around. Today was a turnaround. She was underneath every single SMA, busted through them all, got close to the 200 and she's landed on her 50 with the nine day right under her. This looks good. Here comes the 20 right behind her. Osculators say she is trying to recover right now. We have already crossed the pink line. It is climbing. MACD's over the signal line. It's climbing and our RSI is warming up. She is now up there at 56. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. Well, that's a surprising chart. I wasn't expecting that. Five days ago, we had a high of $2.68 over top of the 200. She came under it and she's been falling all this time. Hit a low of $1.43 uh, yesterday. Popped up to that 200 and just scraped on that, hanging on to it tooth and nail. Fell away from it and then this morning says, I'm tired of this and jumped. Went from a buck 53 up to $2.13. Wow. That's about, uh, oh, I don't know, 40% jump right there. Then she came down, landed hard on her 200, bounced on it twice, and she's climbing. And we've got a turnaround. Look at that 200, came down, and whoop, she is now on an uptrend. Osculators, um, they're warm, but not very warm. They aren't falling. They are climbing very slowly, except for our RSI. That has just fallen because of that little red bar right there. I'm liking this company, folks. I think the parachute is going to be needed for every single drone that wants to be around people. And how many drone companies are out there? How many of them in different countries? This can go anywhere. I think this is going to be a big business. I haven't seen any other companies doing what they do. I'd put PRZO on my watch list and I'm advising you to do the same thing. Now here's something we don't see too often, a hot penny stock from the New York Stock Exchange. This is Turan Orbital Corporation, ticker LLAP. Now she does have an atypical breakout chart and she is setting up for a breakout right now, but it is the early stages. The good thing is she's got a lot of hot news and they're about contracts she's got with big companies. They are huge contracts. I think this news is enough to get this chart to start climbing. LLAP, she finished the day at about 82 and a half cents with almost 21% gains. So what is Turan Orbital about? Turan Orbital is a leading manufacturer of satellite products, primarily serving the aerospace and defense industries. Turan Orbital provides end-to-end -end satellite solutions by combining satellite design, production, launch planning, mission operations, and on-orbit support to meet the needs of the most demanding military, civil, and commercial customers. And they make parts. They make these chassis, kind of like electric cars. You build one chassis and you can put any car on top of it. Well, they build chassis that they call buses. And they can build all different types of satellites on one bus. And that's where they're doing a lot of business right now. So what was the relative volume around lap today? There we go. That's what we're talking about. Almost triple, uh, maybe two and a half times her normal volume, going from 4.4 million to almost 12 million today. Share structure for LAP. Again, not a lot of information. Outstanding share count, about 172 million. Nothing here about the float. As I always say, it could be that high or it could be considerably less. Market cap, about 117 million. Taking a look at the financials for the company, nothing in 2020, 40 million the first year they're on the books for 2021, more than doubling that in 2022 to 94 million, though they're not making any profit. What's up with that? Quarterly for the company, hey, we actually got them here. Back a year ago, they did $21 million 
and they have been growing every single quarter 27 31 okay they dropped here <laughs> down to 28 but then kicked it back up to 32 million and hey look at this they're finally in the profits disclosures for the company we got a lot of disclosures over here to consider first all these form fours that were filed october 2nd form fours are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares and we're always looking to see if they bought or sold them well they didn't do either here all of these have to do with converting restricted shares to common shares then we have some investors that came into the company about four or five of them they acquired 30 percent of the company october 12th this 8k correlates to news we'll look at that and then this 8k was a warning they got from the new york stock exchange that they are not meeting up at the minimum bid price requirement of a dollar you're under a dollar for too long they'll kick you off the major exchange down to the otc now this was just a warning not a sighting but they still got to take care of it they got to get that price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days close over a dollar and they will be out of hot water now the way the chart looks and the news we're going to look at i don't think going over a buck is going to be a problem but i found another piece of information i found quite intriguing in one of these filings the the directors were not happy with the management so they wrote a letter to the company and i'm only going to look at one sentence here because of what it says at the end leadership missteps have resulted in multiple highly dilutive financings and share price decline of 94 percent since going public in march of 2022 despite estimated three dollar per share present intrinsic value they've just told you what this stock is worth based on the assets they have three dollars and right now we are at a price of 82 and a half cents so i don't think it's going to be too hard to get up over a buck now let's take a look at that news now the company's got a ton of news they are putting it out regularly all of this news this is just from september till october now we're not going to go into all of it just to but i do want to headline some of this because it is a lot that they're doing we're back here starting at september 11th Turan Orbital opens a 60,000 square foot factory edition in Irvine, California. 10 satellites incorporating Turan Orbital buses launch as part of a space development agency's Tranche Zero mission. Then on September 19th, the company had a real big public offering, $32.5 million. The good news is it's over. Six days later, they had sold all those shares and the company now has $32.5 million to do as they please. Then I told you that there was a letter written by discontented investors. You may want to read that letter. Then here, October 13th, Tarrant Orbital opens new printed circuit board assembly facility. I had no clue about that. And then the two pieces of news I do want to jump into. One came out on the 24th and one came out on the 25th. First one, the 24th. They tell us here that Turan Orbital was selected by Lockheed Martin to build satellite buses for their SDA Tranche A2 transport layer constellation. A constellation is lots of satellites. Turan Orbital to build 36 satellite buses for Lockheed Martin. Turan Orbital will deliver the buses to Lockheed Martin, which will conduct payload integration and jointly operate the satellites with SDA. Now, this next paragraph makes me very uneasy. SDA's Beta Constellation will advance the proliferated warfighter space architecture's initial warfighting capability with targeted technology enhancements, mission-focused payload configurations, and increased integration you're talking about a satellite for war something out a weapon in space now they tell us they're going to use this to shoot down missiles not to target cities or anything like that we can only pray Turan orbital is currently building 42 buses for lockheed martin to help the company fulfill its 700 million dollar contract currently scheduled for a late 2024 launch a $700 million contract. That is huge. The other piece of news, this came out on the 25th. They tell us here that Turan Orbital was awarded a $4.7 million contract by European Space Agency. 
Turan Orbital's wholly owned international subsidiary will develop a satellite for a proximity operations and in-orbit service mission for the European Space Agency. Turan Orbital has been chosen as a prime contractor under a $4.7 million contract by the European Space Agency for proximity operations and in-orbit servicing mission that will deploy a nanosatellite spacecraft from Space Rider the European Uncrewed Robotic Laboratory. Space Rider is an uncrewed robotic laboratory about the size of two minivans. At the end of its mission, Space Rider will return to Earth with its payload to be unloaded and then be refurbished for another flight. This contract is in partnership with a consortium of Italian industries and research institutions, including Polytechnic University of Turin, the University of Padova, and Stellar Project SRL. So the company is coming into money. They've got this contract for 4.7 million. They've got the other contract for 700 million. They are getting a lot of business right now. And the chart is looking good. Let's go take a look at it. I know, at first glance, it doesn't look all that good, but there's more potential there than you can see right now. This is Turan Orbital, ticker LLAP. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We've got our high back in February of $3.76 when she had a nice run from about a buck seventy up to $3.76. And then she just fell away underneath the 200, just poking her head through it every now and then, hitting a low here of 62 cents just a couple days ago. And off of that low bubble, she's bouncing. She's come out from underneath her 9, through the 20, through the 50, and look at how big those bars are getting, and she is pushing up towards the 200. Volume is getting stronger every day. Our oscillators, they're looking good. PPO is pushing up. MACD is over to signal line. Lots of green bars. Looking like a forest down there. And our RSI is clear up there at 69. This is looking great. 20-day, one-hour view. High here is 93 cents. She is falling. She tagged the 200, but she didn't break it. Came down to that low bubble, and she is bouncing off of it with some fervor. She got through that 200, came down, bounced off the 50, and bounced through that 200 and is climbing. She is now floating on her 9-day SMA, and after market, she still has some green showing. Oscillators, all of them are pushing up. Our PPO is up. Our MACD is up, though it's leveled off a little bit. And our RSI is at 65 and still pushing up. Five day, five minute. So she was falling down here, came down to our low bubble and changed the trend. Look at our 200. She was coming downhill, hit that low, and now she is running uphill. And she is bouncing on top of this 200, climbing. This is looking nice, folks. She hit a high here of 85.7 cents, fell back and fell to about 79 cents, and she is coming around right now. It looks a little iffy, but she's got a lot going on. She's got that $700 million contract that is going to begin in 2024. She's got that $4.7 million contract she's working on right now. And who knows what else? We read a lot of news. I like where LLAP is going. She is coming into the money. You might as well get in before she breaks a dollar. LLAP belongs on your watch list just like the others do. These are all hot stocks. But of course, I didn't do all the due diligence on them, did I? We've only got about 10 minutes per stock and there's more to know than that. So please, if you're going to invest in these companies, do some more due diligence. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.